I didn't really think about it. But now I'm thinking about it. Do you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm in pain all the time. Name all the injuries that you can remember getting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've had two ACLs, MCL. I'd say probably four tibial plateau fractures on my right leg, uh, two on my left, uh, LCL on my left, uh, meniscus repair, meniscus meniscotomy. What, what was it? Well, they cut your meniscus out. Um, I've had a humerus fracture, spell fracture. Uh, I've still got the plate and the rods in my arm. Um, I've sliced my thumb. I've broken my finger at the Olympics. Uh, I've broken my ankle, had a lot of concussions, broke my wrist. I don't know, I think that's kind of it. How many concussions do you think you've gotten? I don't even, I can't even count. I mean, I just kind of, I crash a lot, so a lot. <laughs> um, if I could, I wanted to name a few and just get you to recall what comes to mind. Uh, the first one being your right knee bending inward sharply and you talked about an odd sensation where almost your body was going over the tips of your skis. That was Sladming 2013 uh, where I tore my MCL, ACL, tibial plateau fracture, yeah. Ski stopped in the snow when I went when I landed on the jump and it was disgusting. What, are, are you aware of what's going on in, in the moment or is the pain such that? Um, you don't really feel the pain necessarily while you're falling. It's kind of when you come to a stop and then it's either sharp or it's not. And usually you know right away if it's, if you're, if you're in one. If you're in one, you know that you're in one. And so in that situation, when you come to a stop. I knew my season was over. I didn't, I didn't know how long I would be out, but I knew it was out. How about November 2016? Uh, you severely fracture the humerus bone in a, your right arm in a training crash. That one was pretty gross because, you know, I, I crashed. It wasn't anything crazy. I just got my arm kind of stuck behind me and I fell onto it. Um, and of course, when I crash, I always check my knees first, you know, am I good? My knees are good. Yep. Everything's good. And then I tried to get up and I tried to like move my arm, you know, to push off and like I would move my shoulder, but the rest of my arm didn't move with it. And I could like, I could feel like the bone. It was absolutely disgusting. Like I could feel that there are pieces of bone. Like I can't really describe it. Um, it felt like my arm wasn't attached to me. Like I had this 15 pounds of weight that was not associated with my body. Um, and then there was, there wasn't enough snow to have the trail go all the way to the bottom. So we had to evacuate me on a truck in a truck on a dirt road. And, uh, I was in so much pain. My physical therapist, Lindsay Winninger had to keep hitting my face to keep me awake. Um, and I had oxygen on and we didn't, something happened that day. We, the medical pack wasn't there. So we didn't have any, any pain meds. And by the time I got to the hospital, um, it had been about an hour and a half since my crash and, um, my oh my nerve, gosh. my nerve had popped out. So the bones were hitting, um, on the nerve and that's why I was in so much pain. Um, and because it had taken so long to get to the hospital, it had been a lot of, um, a lot of damage to the nerve and I woke up from my surgery and I had no function or feeling in my, my hand. And I said, well, I, I asked the doctor, I'm like, did you guys put a nerve block in? And they're like, okay, this is worse than we thought. Well, Lindsay, you have nerve damage. We don't know how long it's gonna take or if it's gonna come back. I had a stroke hand, you know, I, I, it was curled up. I couldn't, I couldn't hold anything. I couldn't, I couldn't move it. I really wanted to be able to write and put a hair tie on and feed myself and didn't know if that was gonna be possible. But we kind of did the opposite of what we, the doctors told us. We, instead of icing it, that's what you're normally supposed to do, we got in a hot tub because heat stimulates healing. And it stimulated um, swelling, but for the nerve, it was better to be in a hot tub. So we did all of our training in a hot tub 
it was a long process, but um, mm -hmm. definitely one of the worst, like scariest, most painful injuries. What was the point you realized you were going to get through it? Um, when I could write my name. But it's still, I got so tired because it was mentally draining. I literally, my brain hurt. It was so tired from focusing on like just holding the pencil in my hand. Um, but when I could start to like actually write and I could feed myself, um, I, I was pretty good at eyeliner though on my left hand. My left hand, I, that was one thing that I was pretty impressed with myself. I'm like, wow, I could, I'm close to being ambidextrous, but not really. But at least I got my eyeliner. When your uh, trainer got pissed off at you for the broken arm pull up, uh, it doesn't really it's, phase me that's, very much. That's where you, yeah, uh, it's like, you get that's, it from. you know, I, I always take doctor suggestion as like a suggestion and a negotiation as instead of like this is what it has to be. So I'm like, uh, I know that you told me I should be in this walking boot for six weeks, but I think four weeks is probably going to be pretty good for me. You know, I, I like to, and I usually get them to negotiate down. You know, I'm like, ah, uh, that sounds a little too long. Like. You know, what, what? Do you mean? how do you get a doctor to negotiate because that? Like, I mean, medical advice is medical. <laughs> okay, so it's like if I... <laughs> so you peer pressure them totally. based on your... <laughs> totally. Uh, you, you missed the 2014 Olympics because of injury. But it was painful to watch. Very painful. Because I had done really well. And I had won, I think I won the race, um, like the, the race before the Olympics the year before. And it was a good hill for me. And I was just like... form of torture for sure for me anyways you know you have four years that you're working hard for the olympics and i was in my prime you know and uh you never know what things will be like in another four years you know am i going to be too old uh, to compete so i just didn't know i didn't know what would happen but i knew that that would have been an, a great opportunity for me to have another chance at olympic medal and i didn't have that but you know, everything happens for a reason. Taught me a lot about myself, and I can handle a lot, apparently. Long-term damage to the body. Uh, how much, if at all, did you think about it during your career? I didn't really think about it. But now I think about it. Do you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm in pain all the time. Like, I work out not because, I mean, I love working out, and I think it, it, it helps me, you know, get over ski racing, but I also have to work out. If I don't work out, my knee is in extreme pain. Like I have a hard time walking the dogs for 10 minutes um, because if I don't strengthen my muscles around my knee, then it, it's bone on bone right now. And uh, if I'm not strong enough, then it's unreal painful. So, and that's just one of many joints and injuries that I've had. So I'm really not looking forward to what things look like in 20 years. Um, probably, I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, how long do I wait till I get a knee replacement? You know, I, <laughs> this is life now. So how do I, how do I manage this to live with as little pain as possible? And I'm trying to make it through. Cause if I had a, even a partial knee replacement, I need another replacement in 10 years. So how many times, like, I don't know, is there maximum like knee replacements you can have? Like, I don't know that. Yeah. Like, I've already had more stem cell injections than like anyone they've ever done, and it's not really helping. So uh, I don't really know what my options are at this point, but I'm hoping that someone comes up with something. You, you'd said the night before uh, your final race, it's really scary to think about not having something I love so much, but I also want a future. Yeah, I mean, it's, that's exactly how I felt and I still feel, you know, it's, I still have to look forward to the future, you know, how, at what point is the, the risk outweigh the reward? And I had reached that point. Um, I knew what, that would happen eventually, you know, every athlete does, but it doesn't make it easier to accept. Um, and I want to ski when I, with my kids, you know, I, I, I would like to go on a longer than 10 minute walk with my dogs, you know? Um, and so that's why I, I stopped because I am too, too damaged. I know mentally that 
I could still win. I could still win today. But I don't, the engine's broken, you know. There's no, like, there's no mechanic that can fix it good enough to be able to compete at a level that I'm confident I can win at. Do you really b believe that? Yeah, I'm physically, I'm, I mean, and I'm, I'm one of many athletes that is experiencing the same thing. I mean, I know athletes that are uh, over, on a scale of one to 10, they're, they're a 12, I'm paying every day. So I'm not at a 12 yet, but I don't want to get there. Right. <laughs> it's not a fun life.